Good afternoon. It is Thursday, October 18th, 2012. This is Jason Horak reporting on the Dodge Daytona electric vehicle. And uh, I just wanted to bring your attention to the temperature today. Uh, it's actually quite warm for <laughs> middle of October. Uh, according to weather.com on my phone here, which I'm not sure if it'll come out on the camera or not, but it says it's 60 degrees. Um, with wind at 21 miles an hour gusting up to 32. Um, so that's 62% uh, you know, humidity. <laughs> Typical uh, you know, fall afternoon. Um, but uh, again, it's a little bit warm for the season, so that's nice. Uh, so we're working in the garage here on the Dodge Daytona. And I just wanted to mention the temperature because here in my as you can see, completely uninsulated garage. <laughs> um, the temperature is 69 degrees uh, with 56% relative humidity. Um, and the reason why it's nice and toasty in here is that I've actually been running my heater in my electric car uh, with the windows open to heat my garage for the last uh, hour or so. And uh, so that just kind of goes to show how much heat these little ceramic um, heater elements that I've put in where the heater core goes uh, actually puts out so much heat that I can heat my entire uninsulated garage 10 degrees above uh, ambient. So that's kind of nice. Uh, I did pretty much the same thing last winter when it was you know negative 10 out. I could bring it up to a nice toasty zero degrees in the garage, um, and then I. Uh, worked on the car. So anyway, today is going to be an interesting day um, because I'm going to pull the motor out of this car, or at least I'm going to try. Um, and uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to do it without removing the battery box. Um, so what I had done out in uh, at Evcon with the help of Jesse Hale and several other conference attendees, um, we pulled the motor out from the bottom while it was up on the EVTV lift. Well, I don't have a lift, and I don't have a jack stand, or a, uh, what was it? It was the transmission jack, rather. Um, what I've got is a floor jack, and my car up on ramps. So this is how much space I've got to work with. Um, I also don't have anybody to help me, so I'm <laughs> doing this solo. Um, but yeah, so that motor I'm going to try to pull out from the bottom here. And um, I know it can be done uh, as we did it out in Mavcon, so <laughs> here goes nothing. So I'm going to try to video uh, various pieces along the way of taking this apart, and uh, we'll try to come up with something useful to put up on YouTube. Um, so basically, the first step is I'm going to have to support the motor uh, with the jack, uh, the floor jack, and then I'm going to remove these four bolts that just hold this metal uh, plate on, which is the tail shaft support for the motor. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I also have to remove this uh, proximity sensor and the reluctor ring uh, in preparation for actually pulling the motor out because it does sort of catch on this metal plate if I don't. Um, so those two bolts will have to come out as well. Um, and then that whole end will be free. Uh, to get out the other side of the motor, we're going to have to take this bolt here, this bolt here, there's another one in the back. There's two up on uh, there's two up on the top, which is very hard to see because they're actually behind the battery box at this point. Um, and then there's one right here uh, that hooks to that. So I believe that is all all the bolts. So there's what two, four, six bolts that hold the whole thing together uh, to the transmission, and um, then the trans the motor will slide right out and. Uh, <laughs> it should be a thing of beauty. Uh, the tricky part in my build is that the battery box is right there. I don't know if I can get a good shot of this. I'm going to try. Master of the shaky cam footage um, that I am. Uh, yeah, so this is the transmission uh, from this side. And you can see that the battery box 
comes really close there. Uh, and basically, uh, the long part of the battery box that goes up underneath um, to the front, or well, toward the back of the car, uh, will hit the top of this transmission um, plating. Let's see if I light it in there, maybe. I'm not sure if that'll work. So yeah, so you can see that that, that top bolt um, will hit the side of the battery box um, when I go to pull it out. So the whole transmission has to be lowered just enough <laughs> so that we can actually get that out of there. Um, so it's a little bit tricky and it probably puts a lot of stress on uh, the, the drive shafts and so forth because we're like, going to be torquing the transmission around. But uh, uh, last time we lost a lot of uh, oil out of the transmission when we were doing this because it had uh, the drive shaft slipped out um, actually this drive shaft on this side uh, slipped out just enough that it drained the oil out so that's why the transmission was low on oil uh, during the drag strip event and stuff it was all due to <laughs> swapping the motor but whatever it's all good so now currently we have um, you know the transmission has the appropriate amount of oil in there and I'm gonna put a pan under here when I pull this because I know it's gonna leak again and I'll be catching that trans transmission oil um, and we'll, we'll see if I can <laughs> uh, not make too much of a mess that's kind of the goal so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, dis supporting this motor and then dismantling uh, some of these bolts and I'll be back with an update in a minute Okay, this is uh, just a little aside. Um, as you can see, I've got my floor jack here. Uh, There's just an AutoZone <laughs> floor jack, and it's holding up the motor, uh, currently supporting the motor, by virtue of this little um, adapter that I just got. Um, I think it was like 50 bucks from AutoZone, um, but it's a just a big iron, you know, heavy iron plate with some like padding on top. And what it's used for normally is to t adapt your regular floor jack into working with a, um, you know, to being being able to be used for motorcycles. So you could use it as a motorcycle jack as well. Um, and uh, I figured it would be perfect for this application because I needed something that could support the motor very well uh, and I could tie the motor to while I was trying to, you know, pull it out from underneath this car. Um, so anyway, I'm going to give it a try and uh, see how this works. Uh, so again, at this point, all I have to do is pull out the, the four bolts on the end um, that hold the plate to the motor, and then the two bolts that hold that little retaining bracket uh, for the RPM sensor uh, here. So uh, anyway, I'll take those out, and then that whole metal plate can come off and the motor will just be supported uh, by this jack and by the uh, transmission uh, bolts and then I'll take the transmission bolts out and we'll go from there so anyway I'll be right back well as usual it's never easy <laughs> but as you can see we're draining the oil out of the transmission um, this particular transmission does not have a drain hole at all, um, and so the only way to get the oil out of it is to uh, pull the drive shaft. And as you can see, that's where all the oil is coming from, is the drive shaft. So, uh, just where the drive shaft goes into the transmission. Um, so, the motor, you know, is no longer connected to its, uh, you know, it doesn't have any supports on it. Um, and in fact, we've got all the bolts out, with the exception of two that are up on top. And I'll try to get the get the light up in there so we can see. Well, in a Herculean effort, uh, the motor has been removed from this uh, from the transmission, and uh, it came out more or less in one piece. Always a good thing. And there it is on the jack. So um, this was an incredible amount of work for so little gain just to get the motor out. 
and something that I had sworn never to do again. But here we are. So anyway, um, yeah. So the motor's out, and uh, now we can we can see the spec um, pressure plate and uh, the original iron flywheel once again, and the spec clutch. So what we're going to do is spin the motor just by hand. Uh, now that we can really get some uh, uh, more torque on it than just, just trying to spin the tail shaft. So. so as you can hear, there are bad crunchy noises, but it's not too bad. And the motor spins reasonably freely. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm hoping, hoping that the motor won't be too badly damaged inside. Um, a whole lot of, mo of more uh, debris and chunks um, came f falling out as I moved the motor out. Um, again, it looks like more brush debris, possibly some of the uh, balancing clay. Who knows? But um, anyway, the motor is out. So I'm going to take a little break because this pretty much wore out all the energy I had for today. And uh, But we'll see if I can get a second one later on and um, start taking the motor apart. So that should be fun and exciting. <laughs> but just in case I don't get to it today, uh, have a good day. Alrighty then. So as you can see, I've got the motor completely disassembled, uh, or at least out of the car. And I pulled off all of the, um, the the spacer ring and the transmission adapter plate. Um, this little piece of angle iron I used to hold the flywheel um, from spinning just by putting it into the teeth on the flywheel. It kind of holds that and uh, makes it much easier to remove the flywheel uh, as well as the pressure plate uh, bolts. So uh, since the motor doesn't have any resistance, it just spins freely and it's a pain in the butt to... <laughs> remove those kind of things. So anyway, as you can see, the motor is out. And as you can probably hear, the crunching noises are much less bad. That's probably due to the fact that a great number, or a great deal of black crap <laughs> fell out of this thing uh, just while I was taking out its bolts. And um, I haven't actually disassembled this, the casing yet, um, but uh, there's definitely a lot of brush debris in there. Um, and I'm really hoping that that brush debris was all, all that bad noise was actually the brush debris um, scraping around inside the motor, which hopefully wasn't, you know, as bad as other things that could be in there. So, anyway, I'm going to try uh, turning the motor up on its end and uh, I'm just going to balance it on this piece here, which is the drive end, um, and then try to take off the commutator end and then the housing. And if all goes according to plan, <laughs> the motor should be uh, fully revealed, and I can take a look inside. So I'll be right back. Well, isn't that special? <laughs> so I've got the motor up on end, and all of the bolts have been removed from both sides. And the motor is still together. So this is kind of interesting. Um, we're resting on the drive shaft. And we can spin the motor freely. And it just kind of kind of goes. Bad noises? Not so much. There's still a little bit of something scraping, but uh, not nearly to the, the what we had before. Um, we can go also go backwards or the other direction because um, there's no brushes in here, so there's nothing to uh, run backwards and cause problems. So anyway, it's um, <laughs> so the motor is not coming apart. Um, and I vaguely remember something on one of Jack's shows about having to put 
um, maybe even this motor, I'm not sure, but this top piece, I think they had to put like in the oven or something and bake it uh, to make the metal uh, contract or expand or something in order to get this on there. Um, I don't know. This thing weighs a freaking ton. Putting it in my oven would be very difficult. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, I also see some holes right here. Um, and so I wonder if this is, has turned somewhat, um, possibly. I'm not really sure. It doesn't seem to be really moving at all. Um, in my attempts to yank it off, and it's like, nope, I don't think so. So, I'm going to go back and review some of Jack's shows um, and see if there's a super secret trick to getting the motor apart without breaking anything. And, uh, I mean, I could put a, a screwdriver in here and just kind of hammer it in and separate it, but that seems sort of violent for <laughs> getting the motor apart. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, kind of impressed with the fact that it, it seems to be spinning pretty freely now, now that we got all that uh, excess crud out of there. And uh, who knows, maybe there's hope for the old girl yet. So anyway, I'm going to go do some research, and I'll probably call it a night, but uh, we'll come back <clears throat> tomorrow with an update, um, and we'll go from there. <laughs> Take care and have a wonderful night.